Hello everyone and welcome back to Fly Out Early Access. In the previous video I talked about maybe trying out propellers in this video, but I've had a change of heart because I really want to see how fast and high up I can go. I mean, of course, right? I mean, why, why wouldn't that be the next goal? So I'll, I'll put off the propellers for a little bit. I just want to see how fast I can go. And so I'm not going to make a SR-71 replica. After all, I have one in KSP. I modeled it in Blender and everything. There's no point in me making another a replica like that, uh, though that one isn't going as fast as it should be, but I need to fix that. And so I'll be spending enough time with an SR-71 replica as it is. So I'm going to make something completely different, uh, but, uh, you know, in principle, obviously similar. So let me get to work on that and show you what I come up with. Okay, so admittedly, what I've done is rather close to an SR-71. Um, some, some differences, obviously. Uh, some simplifications. I don't have shotgun intakes right now. I don't have exactly the same outer wing shape. And I also don't have three wheels on the landing gear because we can't do that. It's a pretty big plane uh, by flyout standards, I think. Uh, 80 tons right now, dry weight 53 tons, mainly because I put enormous engines on. And taking a look at the engines, now I, I could have gone with a ramjet, that's another thing, but I didn't go with the ramjet. Now I don't know all of the numbers for the SR-71 engines, but I decided that I would copy the SR-71 engines as best I could, it makes sense. Uh, I bumped up the diameter to maximum. That's the bypass ratio for the J58 when it has the afterburners on. Um, otherwise, and that's, you know, close to Mach 3. Otherwise, it actually has no bypass ratio. Uh, I don't know what the LPC and HPC are. However, overall pressure ratio is 8.8 .8 for the J58, actually. The tip mock, I have no idea, but 1.5, it should be probably pretty fast compared to high bypass engines. Um, I don't know how fast it is. It is a cannular combustor, and I bumped up the temperature to maximum. It makes sense. It's really hot. Um, the idle throttle, I don't know, but we want it as low as possible. So if we can get it lower than that, that'd be great. Obviously, afterburner in this case, I'm, I just maxed out the temperature. And variable area nozzle, it didn't have any of the fancy vectoring stuff. Now, I didn't know how to make an all-moving control surface that would look like this. Uh, there is a, because uh, the um, uh, vertical stabilizers do move completely on the SR-71, though we don't necessarily need to have that. We don't need to copy it perfectly. Uh, but the Taylor on 15 didn't let me shape it into this shape. So it probably could be an all-moving surface, but I didn't see a wing editor on it. So that was peculiar. So I just used a regular wing and I hope I've got it configured properly, but we're gonna find out. I haven't brought it out yet. I put a belly fuel tank in because I wasn't liking the fuel fraction. I mean, we want to go, we want to have time to get to where we're going. And these are really big engines that cause a lot of fuel. And we don't have mid-air refueling right now, as far as I know. So I decided to put a belly tank. I don't know, oh, we've got a hard point here, but I don't know if it's actually on the hard point properly. Because uh, when I placed it, it didn't want to go on the hard point. It wanted to go on the body. So I don't know. I don't know whether that's parented properly. Oh, maybe actually the hierarchy would be good for that. Um, let's see. Uh, hard point. Well, it says drop tank is parented to, uh, is below the hard point. So it's a child of the hard point. So I, I guess it's all right. Okay. And I've got the hard point bound to R. It's raining. Just a little bit. Well, I think the 15% is way too low. Oh, this throttle. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, no. 15% is fine. Okay, there's no parking brake. Okay, controls are fine. Oh, these are getting substantially less thrust than I thought they would. Um, okay, some of the numbers we've done must be wrong then. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's using fuel. Which is not producing much thrust. Hmm. Okay. 
how can I have such big engines with no parking brake on and it getting so little thrust? Maybe the tip mock, let's, because that's the one I'm most uncer uncertain about. Um, let's try and put it back to 0.8 and see what happens. I know some planes have it going at 1.5. Okay, well, or maybe the engine just quit out before. Well, up we go. Really fast, though. Our thrust weight ratio is greater than one, I think. So we can go straight up. Well, but at a certain point, we're not going to have enough air, so there's that. Not this height. This height is fine. We're past Mach 1 in a vertical climb. <laughs> oh, I didn't really set fuel priority for the drop tank. Oh, oh, it, it's going down really fast now. See, uh, I needed the... Okay, indicated airspeed is only 240, so that's probably why. We need to go faster. Let, let me just let it go faster. I mean, it should have a lower stall speed than that, though. Indicated airspeed's the important one as far as how the plane flies. Okay, well, uh, I don't know how the autopilot's gonna deal with a really fidgety situation here. It wasn't good with the altitude holding before. We'll see. Fifty thousand Mach Well, three at least. And heading what is our heading? Uh pretty close to zero. And can you go up? Actually we should be going like eighty thousand feet at least. Well the world isn't like curving like Kerbin does, so that's good. So it's a big world. Could be a flat world. We have to verify that. Oh, flaps are still at one. Shoot. Well, I actually haven't configured any flaps, so. The lower fuel consumption sort of indicates that we're also getting less air, so we have to watch out for that. Let me see if I can drop the drop tank. Off it goes. Maybe instead of having the fuel tank, we could have the ramjet. Okay, let's try and go down instead. We were going faster before, I think. And we we're having to use a lot of pitch to hold our nose up. I wish I had some sort of map or reference so that I know when we actually get back to our starting point. So this is the first flight of this plane. Pretty successful so far. Now... It holding the right altitude is still an issue, but at least it, it's okay, I guess. Nice plumes and uh, effects inside the engines. Well, we, we don't have any land around here. Clouds aren't bad, though. Our speed is only creeping up now. You know, disengage that and sort of let it fly more naturally with a little bit of pitch trim. Yeah, we're not getting too far past the speed right now. Okay, glad well, and belabor that. Let me uh, see about trying to add a ramjet to it in addition to these jet engines and see what happens. I'm just going to leave it a bare ramjet. I'm not going to put a fuselage around it. Need to keep in mind its effect on our center of mass. Gonna torch the body like that though. But I don't think they simulate that. What's diffuser mean? Decelerates inlet air, yeah. Well, it's not a scramjet, so we'd need to do that. Well, we'll try it. Let's see what happens. 
quite a roar. The ramjet ain't doing anything right now, I don't think. The actual SR-71 does not climb like this. I guess it's because we're past the speed of sound that we lose the sound up front. Hey, what's the terrain look like? Okay, just so that we remember where we're at kind of thing. We're hitting north, so presumably towards the North Pole. Okie dokie, it's doing stuff. Doing quite a lot, actually. And we're using a lot of fuel. That's what the engines are doing. Mach 3.2, we're already faster than we were before. But... Not really accelerating much. Uh, it's a bit wobbly, too. Then it keeps saying flaps one. We don't have any flaps, it doesn't matter. Well, the main engines don't give thrust at these kinds of speeds. And actually, they start producing negative thrust. Uh, well, now everything's producing negative thrust. Not sure about this whole ramjet business. Well, they're not really working, working right now. Uh, I don't know what these fuel and ignition toggles actually do. A whole lot. Okay, well, I think we should try again. Oh, too late. Uh, they lost power. I need the idle power to be higher, I think. I would need air brakes to land or something, but... Okay, and... This one, diffuser... Higher pressure increase. Let's see about higher pressure increase, maybe. And instead of going straight up, we'll go a little bit more horizontally. Nice tires. Mach 3. Let me just try and turn these. Oh, I need to turn both of them off at the same time, though. <laughs> okay, fine, fine. We can recover that. But it looks like they have the negative thrust anyway. We need to, like, dump the engine pod? We need to close close the intake somehow so that we don't get that. Hmm. So the ramjet isn't working out the way I would like it to. Well, we recovered at least this time. Let's see how high we can get. That's not speed. That won't cause the engines to... The lack of air will cause the engines to choke. But At least it won't be the supersonic airflow. But the ramjet seems to be choked here too. Well, we've stalled already. About 100,000 feet, 100,000 feet. We top by 116,600-ish. Okay, we're getting thrust from the jets again. Just say no to negative thrust. 
No. Okay, coax it back into positive net thrust by going like this. Uh, not really. That's just because there's less air going through. If there's less air going through, then the intake is causing less drag. So that's why the net thrust approaches zero when we deliberately stall like that. Try and get into that valley over there. Our descent speed is really, really high. <laughs> Can't land like this. Uh oh. Okay, well it's sort of like that, is it? Ah, it just went poof. Okay, well, so the ramjet was disappointing. Uh maybe I'm not using it right. Let's return to hangar. So Mach 3, yes. Much past Mach 3, no. We got to 116,000 feet. And the world seems big, so that's positive. But those were the results of the experiments this time. Uh, next time I'll see what I will do. I can't make promises, but uh, the propellers are on my list, my to-do list as far as experimentation is concerned. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.